It's the start of another cruise on the allure of the seas. Hey everyone, I'm Patrick from Oakland Travel, and it's our third time on the ship, Port Canaveral, January 2024. And it was a little short four-night cruise for us. We live in Orlando, so we can be over in Port Canaveral in about an hour. So uh, it's kind of one of those very, very tempting to just jump in the car and drive over there. And this was uh, going to give us a chance to go back to Nassau, Bahamas and see the new cruise terminal that opened in 2023. And yet another chance to go to the perfect day at Coca Cay. And we board the ship on the old Royal Promenade, deck number five, and uh, get a couple of quick directions here so we can get a couple of housekeeping items sort of taken care of as soon as we get on board the ship, and then we make that first walk down the Royal Promenade. See, they got lots of balconies. We must be on the other side. It's the upper deck of the Allure of the Seas. Beautiful day, January, in Port Canaveral, Florida. And uh, the weather was not too bad, uh, a little chilly, but you know, sometimes in Florida, you never know what you're gonna get in terms of the weather. This is going to be a very interesting cruise because it is uh, cold right now. Uh, it's 53 degrees up here. Port Canaveral in January, 53 degrees. And the lifeguards uh, on duty even though there are no kids around. Just, just in case one of them wants to brave the weather and come out here. Of course, the ice cream station is ready to go straight there in the center of the frame, right below the mast bar. I'm sure that the ice cream station will pick up later because even in cold weather, people still love that ice cream. We saw that even on our uh, Arctic crossing cruise on Voyager a couple years ago. The whole time we were in really cold weather, people still getting ice cream. No, this is much this is much better than Harmony. Yeah, because you come right off the elevators and you just come right into this area here. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Wherever you're smaller. It feels smaller than I used to remember it. Like literally just go down there. So it's our tradition on the embarkation day to hit up the old Windjammer for some lunch. And uh, even though it had been about 10 years since the last time we were on Allure of the Seas, the Windjammer kind of felt familiar because we had been on Harmony of the Seas. Uh, just, you know, about a year and a half before this one, which just feels like yesterday in cruise time, you know, cruise days, right? Just, it flies by so quickly and yet, you know, you set foot on one of these ships and it just has that feeling of like, oh, I remember this, I remember this. And the one thing about this uh, buffet is it does feel a little cramped at times, especially when it gets really busy in here. This is embarkation day right around noon, so it's not too busy at this point, but it is definitely uh, starting to pick up a little bit as we were in here a little bit longer and, and picked up lunch. And you see there's it's a little cramped moving around in here, but the food is always good in the Windjammer, excellent choices for lunch. And so, uh, you know, it's just one of those things we plan on doing this whenever we get on board one of the Royal Caribbean ships, Windjammer for lunch.
So it's about early afternoon, not quite one o'clock when they open the state rooms. So kind of that little in between, you see a lot of people are just hanging out on the Royal Promenade here. And of course, everybody's on their phones because one of the first thing everybody does is uh, hook up to the uh, Wi-Fi on the, on the ship, you know, which of course we did that too. Here I'm sticking my head in the uh, on air just for a second, just to kind of look around. This is the karaoke bar on the ship. We never really spend any time in here, so this is about the only time that I ever sort of made a little appearance in here. I kill a little bit more time before they open the staterooms. We're back here on the boardwalk, about a quarter to one o'clock, and so just uh, sort of enjoying the day and uh, kind of refamiliarizing ourselves with the allure. It, it's an Oasis class, right? So it feels very familiar to the Harmony and to the Oasis that we've been on and so on. And uh, just kind of enjoying the embarkation day at this point, just kind of hanging out a little bit. Uh, Sabor back here, we're gonna end up making reservations for later on in the cruise. Nope. Straight up there. Because <laughs> you were down here and I was up there. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be up there. Uh, yeah, I was directly above you because you wanted to watch the aqua, the, the aqua show. So you were down here and I wanted to see the sail away from St. Kitts. So I was up there. Yeah, okay, that's going to be back. Yeah. Because the other thing is when we started walking this way, I'm like, they can't put the slides because of the aqua theater. Well, no, remember the slides or over on they? Harmony, they came, they came down from there and then they went back this way. Oh. And they ended up right where the Sabor thing is. Like that? Yeah, well, where the Sabor thing is, this bar. This bar wasn't there. Yeah, well, Sabor's rumored to be on its way out anyway. Wait, Where'd... that's just a bar. The Sabor is on the other side. Yeah, but, but this bar would be gone because the dry slides would come into here. Yeah. And then the Sabor restaurant is going to go bye bye. Oh, really? That's what the rumor is. That's a specialty, I, isn't it? I mean, that's specialty. Yeah. It's a well, they're re they're replacing it with um, was it lime and coconut or whatever? Uh, mm -hmm. You gotta pay there. Yeah, it's a specialty restaurant. That one's about thirty something dollars a person. Some more? Yeah. Actually, I think I looked at the menu and it looked good. Of course, like, you know. It's like Mexican, right? Yeah. Of course, you know Matt's got all this information. I think that's where I saw it. We was... could splurge and try it since it's going out, or going away. We could say we tried it. Yeah. I mean, supposedly everybody I've ever seen post about it said they really liked it. Shortly after one o'clock, the staterooms are open, and now it is time for everyone's favorite, the old yeah. stateroom tour. Nine two zero five. All right, stateroom nine two zero five. When you first come in the room. And that should be Central Park right there. And then immediately to your right is the bathroom. And of course the classic Royal Caribbean uh, shower there. A lot of people ask about this in our Facebook group, about whether or not that's included. Just the, uh, the usual bathroom. Oh, nice. Get your little cabinets here. Of course, you're safe. You want to do the laundry. So, oh, that's cute. Little uh, digital alarm clock. Oh my God, this is a, this is a godsend right here because uh, some of the other cruise lines have no idea about this and don't do it. And Royal Caribbean does, thankfully. So. Avian bottled water. Pretty nice. Yeah, cute little uh, place to sit. Of course, you got the uh, refrigerator down here. Oh, look at that. They latched the refrigerator to the door. <laughs> nice. And then we got a little cubby area here. Nice view down onto Central Park. Oh, right across from Giovanni's. And then so when you're sitting here and looking back at the stateroom, this is what it looks like. Okay, you ready? Okay, same counts. Here we go, with the bridge up inside. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, right. Two, three, four, five, one. Two, three, four, five, turn. Two, three, four, five, around. Two, three, four, seven. Now 
as we move into the afternoon, it is time for the sail away. And so we're up on uh, the upper deck here, right back by the flow riders where you get the best view and you get that weight view of the allure of the seas as the ship is getting ready to push off. And you know, they're still down there in the aqua theater doing their practice, which is kind of cool because you'll see here in a second, we get that look straight down into the aqua theater from the top deck. And even as the ship starts to push away, they're still down there doing their practicing. So now that the ship has kind of moved out into the channel and out into the ocean, kind of heading back down a little bit into uh, the main parts of the ship. And as you can see, everybody up here by the uh, little uh, golf course and the sports deck over here, just enjoying the beautiful embarkation day, late afternoon sun in January in Port Canaveral, Florida. And uh, we're going to head down to the spa on deck number six. Oh, you're talking about something other than just... Thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Everything here nice and delicious. <laughs> nice and delicious. Holy... What is... The guys... I don't good? remember them having Starbucks at this cafe. Why oh, would yeah. you do that? Why not? It's additional places to sell Starbucks. Oh, it's supposed to be... Well, you have... It's supposed to be the smoothies. Where's but they can do the okay. smoothies, they too. See, he's got some machine over there. Nice. He's getting ready to make one. <laughs> that 
that was the stateroom where we had the constant whistling noise because we're, because of that. Slowly making our way across the uh, Royal Promenade as we're getting closer and closer to needing to head back to the stateroom to get ready for dinner and all of that kind of thing. And as we get back here, we get above uh, Boleros and found a nice little area up here that is uh, directly above the entrance to Boleros where you get a really good sort of command view, if you will, of the Royal Promenade, of course, from that front end of the ship. Uh, but still, it's a neat little area that I'm sure we'd seen before, but never paid much attention to. And we were just kind of walking around and checking this area out right here by where Starbucks is. And here it is. This is the little view that you get if you're standing directly on top of Boleros. And you get a nice long look all the way down the Royal Promenade here. So now it's back into the stateroom and we are in our residential view here where we are directly above the park cafe. So we got a nice view of Central Park here at night. First of four nights on the ship and uh, the weather cooperated for the most part during this cruise. It was bright at the end of January of 2024, the last week. And so a pretty good time to go cruising. Um, you know, sometimes in January, the weather's a little hit or miss. We've been on Mariner of the Seas a few years ago in January, going down the coast of Florida and had some rough weather there. So it's just kind of a hit or miss. But uh, once you get down into the Bahamas, the weather usually holds up pretty well. would turn out to be our favorite bar during that cruise, the Schooner Bar. Need a little uh, drink before dinner. Now we, here we are, deck number three, the main dining room doing the Mai Time dining. And I had the uh, steak here and the uh, key lime pie for dessert. And man, it was really, really good. So after dinner, it's a busy night on the Allure of the Seas, embarkation night, a short little four night cruise. And with it being a shortened cruise, they take a lot of the activities that ordinarily are spread out of the, over the course of a seven night cruise on one of these Oasis class ships and kind of cram it down together. And so there's a lot of stuff going on in the embarkation day, embarkation night. Uh, we were gonna catch the Ocean Aria show. We've also got the 70s disco uh, party on this very first night. So we got some footage of that coming up here in a second. So just in Dazzles here, kind of watching this, the, uh, the live band doing an amazing job with some Michael Jackson, some Prince, some of the well-known classics, and uh, just excellent performances here in Dazzles.
rocky theme going from the 70s and no matter how many times you hear it it's always cool in the intro here for the 70s disco party of the royal promenade and so this is the first night on the allure of the seas only a four night cruise a nice little short deal out of uh, port canaveral florida gave us a chance to get back over to nassau bahamas check out the new cruise terminal over there plus another day to visit uh, perfect day at coca Cay, royal caribbean's private island in the bahamas so uh, when you live in Orlando, Florida, and Port Canaveral is only an hour away, it's very easy to just jump in the car and head over there. So that's what we did. So this is the first night of the cruise. So we're going to do one of these little uh, sort of recaps for each day of the cruise. So be sure to stick around and check the other days out on the vlog channel. And thanks for watching.